Hi, this is Trogi. Welcome to my Nintendo 64 controller purchase guide. Note that this video focuses on OEM N64 controllers only and neglects Hori and other third party controllers. If you're not sure what controller to get, check out Nintendo's video in the description below. So the focus of this video will lay on the controller stick as it's the most crucial part of the controller and usually determines if the controller is good and worth its money. The button quality can suffer too, but buttons are much easier to replace than a joystick as there is no really good joystick replacement at this point that's available right now. So let's jump right in. 5 things to pay attention to when ordering controllers online. Number 1. Make sure it's not a reproduction, a so called repro controller. A few signs to check this. If there is no Nintendo logo above the start button, it's a fake. They also often have weird colors that don't exist for real controllers, such as crystal red. Closest to that would be the fantastic watermelon red controller, which is more pink though. A full list of all existing controllers can be found in the description below. Number 2. You want an original stick too, not a repro, as most replacement sticks are very cheap and much worse than an original joystick. Sometimes it's hard to tell if the stick is real, but a huge dot or such a big hole in the middle of the stick can be a sign it's a repro. And if it's a GameCube style replacement stick, run away. Actually, it will often tell you in the description if the stick is not an original one and even praise the shitty Chinese bear. So now next, check the overall condition of the controller. How used does it look? Keep in mind that N64 controllers are sometimes more than 20 years old, so they will probably have some sign of wear. However, if it's really dirty, it means it's been used a lot or hasn't been treated too well, so the stick and the buttons are likely to be worn out. Number 4 for the most important part. Check the stick on the pictures. If a stick is worn out, it will move easier when slightly touching it. It will also move once you tilt the controller. So on the auction, make sure that the stick points directly upwards. Sometimes it's hard to tell if there's just one picture of the controller, so maybe ask for more. This is an example for a stick that's clearly not centered. And if the stick looks something like my childhood controller, keep your fingers away from it. By the way, keep in mind that a joystick pointing upwards is not a guarantee for a good joystick. And a joystick not pointing directly upwards doesn't mean it's a shitty stick by any means. It's just about the chance. The chance is higher that the stick is good if it points upwards. And point 5. Check if the seller is trustworthy. They are more trustworthy if they focus on video game goods instead of just random items. Before I move on to the tips and tricks section, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and leave me a like, I appreciate it. And now, 5 tips and tricks when buying controllers. So refurbished in the title often means the controller has been cleaned. But from my experience, it often means it has a repro stick as well, so I don't even bother clicking on those. A little trick on auction sites. If the condition of the item is set to brand new, it's a repro controller. But usually you can just tell because box controllers don't go for like 30 bucks. A vague rule of the thumb is, basic controllers are cheapest, fantastic or clear controllers go for a bit more, Pokemon controllers for even more and most of the rest is usually very expensive even if the controller's quality, including the stick, is very bad. Ok, tip number 3. Check the auction's description. If it says tested, works. About the controller, it probably means that the seller knows very little about controller quality and joysticks as he only cares about the functionality but not about its quality. If it says like, tested, tight stick. That's a good sign. 
And tip 4, don't give up too fast if the controller has some dirt on it. Some controllers show sign of wars much quicker, especially the golden Toys R Us controller and the solid grey one. They might be just as sturdy as a transparent fantastic controller, but they just look a lot worse. And number 5, a very valuable tip in my opinion. Controllers in Japan usually go for much less compared to the rest of the world, as there is a bit of an N64 hardware inflation there. If you get lucky, you can get very good controllers for very little money. And on a final note, ordering OEM controllers online is still a bit of a lottery. Sometimes you get really good controllers for little money, sometimes you get quite bad controllers and even pay too much for them. So once you order the controller, there will always be a bit of a suspense waiting for the package. And until you open the box and check the stick for yourself, you just want to hope that it's good. Hi, this is Drogi. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you and if it did, let me know in the comments and subscribe to my channel for more N64 content. If there is a topic you'd like to see a video from me about, let me know in the comments as well. Thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.